Shingles just like that house, gutters, everything the same color. You going? What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we are here at the original Goon Squad garage where we're finally gonna start tearing apart the front end of this 2020 Tesla Model X. Because as you guys seen in the previous video, we did a bunch of cleanup from the interior to the exterior. As far as the inside of this Tesla goes, it is super epic in there, especially with all the buttons you can push, all the cool technology, and of course, video games. So we did spend a good bit of time in there. But as far as the exterior goes, we got it cleaned up. And I gotta say, this sucker absolutely glistens from the doors back. But up front here, it's got a little bit of damage. So we gotta start diving in right there and seeing what we gotta get together, what we gotta order, and just basically get a parts list together, dude. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. We're not gonna even have a list. We're probably gonna have a booklet at the end of all this, cause this thing is just toast up here. But the most important thing or the biggest challenge is gonna be locating most of this stuff, right? Definitely, dude. Hopefully we can buy this stuff because if not, dude, we're gonna be practically just gonna be stopped right there in our path. But I think, you know what? I think we can handle dude, this, definitely. dude. definitely. We always got something up our sleeves that we can just pull, pump, uh, uh, do whatever, dude. Dude, honestly, yeah, we're going to figure this out. <laughs> so right now, what we're going to do is go ahead and tear it apart right where it sits because it really doesn't want to turn too much. So we can't pull it up to that garage or this garage. And we don't want to damage too much because when it turns, it makes some sort of weird noises and ruckus or whatnot. So I say we just do this right here. Dude, I say, think dude? this is the best spot right here because as you can tell behind there, there's like some aluminum wires and stuff that if we turn, it can possibly damage more stuff. Dude. Yeah, and that's going to mean more ordering more, parts. More parts than, dude, that are hard to find. <laughs> exactly. We don't want none of that. So I say we go ahead, grab some tools, start tearing apart this front end and see what this sucker is made of. air pressure that thing oh had, my goodness dude. so we just disconnected the air ride compressor <laughs> slash actuator right there and oh my goodness that sucker was like full of air or dude, something full dude. Of air, dude we're actually unscrewing each and every wheel as you can tell it's color coded and it's labeled and as you can see this tab right here is actually cracked and that's the left rear one that was actually flat so that's one reason why that suspension was down and each one of these actually whenever we were unscrewing them was going down in sequence which was really cool and we unscrewed this main line i don't know what this is for because it really didn't do anything when we unscrewed it but it had about 80 psi in it and it was just it was crazy man this thing was just going dude, everywhere i'm dude. guessing there's like some sort of spare tank on this thing possibly yeah, dude. there's probably a spare tank somewhere that just holds air that way the pump doesn't always run but dude this thing right now is just looks slammed, sick dude, dude. dude look crazy, at that dude imagine <laughs> control i wonder if you can control like press a button Ooh. and slam this thing with like some wheels or something dude, dude that'd be awesome dude, dude. that would be gotta epic, look into man. that but back to this area right here where most of this damage occurred we found some wire issues dude, dude that's gonna be tough yeah, man this is this is some pretty good damage right here i mean this is gonna be some kind of wiring game that we're gonna have to play i don't know if this is for a headlight a sensor or whatnot because we're missing the clip i don't know if the clip ripped off of here or somebody just chopped it because this could have been a firefighter chop right here Ooh. you know what i mean look at this there's another firefighter chop area right there which i don't know what that would be for dude, dude. i believe whenever these cars get in a wreck the firefighters actually cut a wire that way nothing keeps running or something like that so this is one way they can just cut it or they can just unclip it and pull the clip out and save yeah. a bunch of time dude. dude that is super awesome right there and another thing that we just noticed there's like some sort of fan that keeps cutting on and off in here yeah it's sucking actually air in and the filter that it connected to is insane it's actually on the front uh, area right here that we pulled off dude look at this sucker what? dude is that a cabin air filter or something I don't know, like that? dude. This is the biggest car filter I've ever seen because it actually, whenever the pump cuts on, it doesn't blow air out of the vents on the inside. So it could be a fan that blows like to the batteries or to the motor or something, dude, because it cuts on like every five seconds, dude. Yeah, we'll have to look into that right there. And another cool thing that we notice is this right here. What is that, dude? dude? I have no idea. It could be one of those heart rate monitors that you clip on hey, when you're driving this thing, Make dude. sure you don't get too excited, dude. Yes, sir, dude. <laughs> but it has a little bit of 3M right there. It probably like connected like to the 
bumper or something like that. And maybe like an antenna or something like that. Yeah, you know dude, what I mean? But as of right now, I'll say we keep on moving, probably tear apart like this cooling system, see if we can get to like the majority of this rail, get it cleaned up and see what this thing see is made of. See how far we can get. guys so it is actually the next day here and we are just moving right along with tearing apart this front end here i gotta say it's starting to look pretty wild almost like we chopped off the front end of this whole entire car dude look dude, at that dude we just pulled the nose off of this thing man it's like completely missing right there but you know what that's how this car is built dude dude built different yes look at sir all these parts that we have out here and the cool thing about this cooling system is it is quite small and pretty dang simple i mean this right here is your only radiator dude, dude that, that is crazy man that thing is super tiny but i guess that's all it needs to cool down the big batteries and just the electric motor yes, dude sir. and the condenser is actually larger than the radiator right here so i guess what's more important than cooling down your car dude cooling down the passengers the man the car dude that is awesome right there and this stuff looks pretty simple i'm sure we'll be able to find this stuff like on ebay or something like yeah, that. yeah i mean it's just one fan and just uh two little like coolers which should be pretty simple hopefully yes sir yeah we're gonna keep on looking for that and also we pulled off this rebar right here or crash bar this sucker right here is actually steel which is kind of weird because everything else is aluminum but i guess it's got to be like extra reinforced hey, or something. Like to be that, reinforced dude. got to be strong right there hopefully that part we can find i know what we kind of looked some of this stuff up it's kind of hard to find we'll probably be able to find that right there on the wish app or something yeah like it'll that. come in paper mache or something like that or we might have to go to like the tesla parts dealership or something like that we'll have to keep on we haven't even found any parts honestly yeah we, we i mean we just been focused on tearing this thing apart and getting a getting that uh, list, list together. down yes sir another cool thing that i noticed about the front end over here is all the cooling or these are water pumps basically up here for the cooling system yeah, there's like uh, six of them dude uh, six Six or four i don't really remember but these are the pumps that stay on whenever the car is just sitting outside the car will actually start pumping coolant through the batteries if it's like too hot outside and i believe there's one above each wheel well and two in the front right here yeah. or something like that so it just cools whenever it needs to cool down just like whether you're driving the car or not and also look at this it's a headlight light bar right here too. dude is that part of the headlight or something so, like dude. that that's crazy that thing was actually shoved all the way in there it just shows how hard this car was hit dude. this is another part of the headlight i believe as well which this looks good and I, that looks like an expensive piece right yes, here yes sir but moving on to the front in right here another super cool thing is how thick these frame rails are right here look how thick these are these are not like your normal car aluminum frame rails these suckers i believe are high strength right there high dude. strength still i mean just look at that front plate dude that is crazy i don't know how thick this plate is right here but the most important thing is to figure out where these suckers actually get spliced dude, in hopefully dude hopefully these get spliced in and hopefully it's not like the whole entire chassis or like the frame of the car because that means we'd have to buy like a whole entire a whole entire car, car dude. dude that's crazy but i wonder if they sell like like these brand new you know what i mean does tesla sell frame rails or not you I, never know dude yeah we'll, we'll have to keep on looking for that but i do believe i see some welds and some bolts right there so i think this may be one of those scenarios where this sucker will just pop right out but another crazy aluminum broken piece is this subframe right here and this sucker just got completely obliterated look dude. at that in several sections right it there it just dude. got ripped off this is the center section that got ripped off as well it was actually welded but that basically tells us why that wheel over there is pushed back right there yep. right exactly because most of the control arms or i think all the control arms are actually connected to the subframe right here and since this rail got tweaked this way it brought this whole entire wheel backwards like that so that makes sense and what we're going to probably try to do is try to straighten this frame rail out a little bit if possible maybe with the skid steer we 
Yeah, yeah like, I mean, like I that. say we pull up and see if we can like push it from that side. That way we can just move some of the suspension up because we want to put this thing closer to the garage. That way we can throw it up on some quick jacks. Yep. And the reason why we want to get it on quick jacks is because we want to take off like the wheels, the suspension possibly, the fenders, because there's a little bit more damage right here that we got to just take a look at. So I say we go ahead, bring in the skid steer, try to bend this over and then set this sucker up on some quick jacks. So we are just moving right along and making some crazy discoveries dude, 100%, while we're at it, dude. dude. But first off, we were able to actually get this car in front of the garage and up on some quick jacks. After doing some minor framework with the skid steer, we actually pushed this frame rail over a little bit, just enough room to pull this suspension up. That way we can turn it in here and we lifted this thing up. That quick jack right there was struggling a little bit because this thing is just super dude, heavy, dude. That sucker weighs 6,500 pounds and that's rated for 5,000 pounds. So it barely lifted it up, but we had to assist it with the jack. And you know what? It's dude, handling it it's now. It's handling. It's all locked in. So we are good. But you know what? Somebody has to test that thing out. Somebody has to put it to the limit, you know? Hey, I and mean? we're doing it right here with this Tesla. But luckily, dude, we found out that there's not too much crazy damages in this wheel well right here from that tire rubbing on that yeah, stuff right so there. Yeah, so it just mainly rubbed up against this aluminum or whatever that is. And, I mean, it just cut like one or two wires. This is the AC lines, which is pretty crazy how they run through here. But you know what? They're not damaged. It just barely touched them. Luckily, it didn't touch these main power lines right here Ooh. from the battery. Dude, look at that. They actually did a good job on tucking them in between the metal. Because if that was cut, man, there ain't no soldering that, dude. Oh, my goodness. You get zapped, too, right you there, get dude. More than that man you French might fried. you might go to the moon after that dude. <laughs> dude but that's pretty much it for the damages in there other than more wiring damage yeah oh so there's goodness. a bunch of like missing like wires and stuff like that like who knows what that goes to and look at this dude there's just so many modules this one is like a continental module made in usa i think this is the tire pressure sensor then you got one right here that looks like a home link what is that that's dude? probably for garage door oh, opening yeah, or garage something like that door dude. Openers. then you got some kind of actuators right here like who knows what this stuff probably is for. for the self-driving turning or steering or something probably like that just dude. turns the whole wheel right here but who knows dude it's just crazy seeing all this stuff and how much like different like countries, countries. make like parts for this dude, Tesla, i was dude. noticing like all the parts are made from different countries which i guess makes sense if the technology is out there might as well just source it and make production and a build lot faster. like a super awesome car dude. exactly That's the most crazy. epic car ever of course you got some pillar damage right there which hey, man, we that, might fix that dude, dude. that's what i was thinking dude if we use like some hammers look at that you can get in there you can pop that out try to straighten it out as best as possible if you can get it super close weld it up dude you saved yourself a couple hundred bucks right there yeah dude. if we can't save it we'll probably just buy a whole entire piece right there but as far as the fender goes that sucker popped off clean dude, with the apron dude popped off with the apron look at that dude it just popped off in the apron all it is, is just riveted with some panel bonds so that's probably why it popped off so easy it almost looks like it's still in good shape we'll probably
probably reuse that. If not, we'll just get a new one, replace it. Super simple. But most importantly, this uh, shock tower aluminum piece right here is not damaged. So yeah. it looks to be in good condition. And dude. good thing it's not damaged because that is cast aluminum. And I don't even know if you can weld cast aluminum. I don't you think can, so. You can probably like do some spot welds or something. But luckily that's not damaged because we can easily like rivet a new piece on there, dude. Yes, no sir. problem. And as we're working with this frame rail over here, we're noticing that it it's looking more and more like it actually just pops off right there, dude. dude. It's looking promising, dude. So it looks like, it, it, as you can tell, there's panel bond right there and there's a couple bolts in there that screw down to this. And I believe it like in somewhere right here behind this sh shock right here. So that is a really good sign. That means we can replace this thing, yeah. dude. Anytime you see panel bond, that means that something is bonded onto something else right yes, there. Sir. So I think it's just gonna pop out right there, but that's it for that. We just gotta find that piece. Next thing that we're gonna move on to is trying to remove the subframe, yeah, dude. So that's the biggest thing. And before we even hop on the subframe, try to remove it, we're definitely gonna have to drop both suspensions on both sides just to drop everything down. And once we start dropping stuff down, dude, I don't even know, look at all this like jumbo mess going on right here. We may even have to drop it with the electric motor. Who oh, knows, man. dude? Because that motor might be actually connected to that subframe which would be insane but you know what i think we can handle dude, it if dude. it comes down to it super easy we'll just you know get down and, and, and get it done dude. exactly we'll start shooting it with some ugga duggas and take that sucker out of there but as right now say we'll probably start removing suspension components yeah, so i say we go ahead drop that other wheel may take that fender off start taking apart some of the suspension components and see if we can get to the subframe dang frame out man dude, that's a trophy piece right there and we pulled that sucker like a two dude, didn't we, dude? all wiggling it and stuff like that all through us we had to call pops out with this big hammer right here and he started whacking it and dude we managed to pull out a frame rail dude dude that is insane right there and that sucker was on a bunch of panel bond just three welds and then a bunch of bolts just, as well just dude. a bunch of bolts we had to like get in here we had to unscrew the abs and stuff like that just to get out there it was super tight but we managed to unscrew everything and as soon as we seen it wiggle dude we were like dude we got to get it out dude we're like we don't need to worry about the subframe right now we need to get this frame yes, rail out sir. as soon as possible and pops man. you think you can straighten that thing out for us for, with uh, a hammer it's a good idea <laughs> <laughs> make it a uh, little bit uh, use a torch a little bit uh, hit up run it over with it. the skid steer straighten it out yeah. slap it back in you got yourself a good dude, frame rail pops man. always <laughs> got a plan man <laughs> but, but anyways that's going to be the next biggest task is trying to find a new one of those yes, dude definitely if you guys know where we can get one or if you guys have one definitely hit us up because tonight we're going to be doing a bunch of research trying to locate that frame rail after that frame rail right there the subframe is going to get dropped which hopefully it's as easy as that frame rail because that was pretty simple 
you know that was just a little bit of like thinking and stuff like that and we popped it out hopefully we don't have to drop the motor and then we'll get a brand new subframe a brand new frame rail and dude once we slap those two things on the front end is basically done we just piece it all back dude. together dude. but look how we got it looking right now ain't that just insane the dude. whole entire front end is missing yeah, basically dude, now you can say that we chopped the front end of this tesla off i mean look at all these parts that we have around this we got a whole entire tesla junk oh, dude and there's an air shock right there which is kind of made by bilstein or yeah something look at like that, that made by bilstein look at these suckers dude these are crazy that man. is nice we got the it's knuckle there airbag yeah, airbag, airbag like man. on your semi truck right yeah it's a front uh, front wheel front wheel yes sir dude that's so awesome right there and the brakes are actually brimbos right yeah, they're brimbos it has brimbo stamped on the back of it which is pretty cool dude check that out brimbo made in mexico these things are meant to be in mexico and we're definitely going to paint those things right there, probably dude. like a red dude it's going to look blue, so good whatever i mean let us know what color will look good especially if we're going to do like a blackout theme that would be epic or white you know to Ooh, kind of match the interior good thinking right dude, there dude epic, we're going to let you guys decide on that but that's going to be pretty much it for tonight we got a bunch of cleanup that we got to do we got parts in front of the ferrari behind the ferrari around the tesla dude, dude what do you say man we're gonna go ahead and clean this all up catch you guys tomorrow in the morning Alrighty guys, so it is actually the next day here and the first thing that we did was stop by the Home Depot, dude. dude. Stop by the Home Depot to grab a measuring tape. Well, we thought we grabbed a big measuring tape. We actually bought the biggest uh, chalk line <laughs> in the world, 150 foot as we speak, dude. Hey, it's all right, dude. We're just doing some basic measurements and also got some spray paint there. We'll explain to that here in a little bit. Also stopped by the Kubota dealership, picked up our buckets because the previous ones had a little bit of an issue fitting the uh, excavator here. Yeah, they just bored them out and I think they fixed them so they should work just fine. This is our four, four foot Ooh. bucket. This thing is massive. We're going to put this thing to work here really soon because the reason we're up here is because we want to plan on building something, dude. Exactly. We are planning on building a carport. And I know you guys are probably wondering, what about your commercial building? What about the garage we're going to build up here? As for the commercial building, we're just waiting on a few things because yeah. right now the market's hot, yeah, dude. The market's hot. All the builders are mainly focused on building like housing houses. market because the housing market is just so hot right now. People are buying houses left and right and the prices are up. And on top of that, the wood prices are up too. So that's why we're going to hold off on this shop over here because everything is just super insane and honestly i don't really want to focus on this uh, garage over here until our commercial building is built because that's going to be epic on its own yeah you know exactly I mean? one thing at a time kind of as best as possible we're trying to keep things just like just flowing dude flowing that's not exactly not right. too overwhelming yes, so sir. we want to build like what like an eight carport area right here yeah, basically carport dude. slash pavilion we kind of got something in mind something super nice not what you guys are probably thinking of dude look at this dude oh, can you see that dude, dude yes that is so sick right there and it's going to be clean it's going to match the house as well, right? Yeah, it's going to match the house. We're going to do the posts. They're going to be made out of probably the same stone that the house is made of. Shingles just like that house. Gutters, everything the same color. That way it looks really good right here and matches the house. And it's going to increase the value of this whole entire property overall, dude. Yes, sir. And also we could store our cars in here and we can start working up here full time, basically, dude. 100%. Dude. That's going to be epic on its own, just being able to work up here. So we're going to try to build something super nice. It's all by ourselves, right? All by ourselves, like everything. We want to do the concrete. We want to do the grading the dirt work everything like to the very end dude yeah so we're not gonna have to rely on anybody to do this for us usually when you rely on somebody else you get a little held bit back, you dude. held back because everybody's busy so yes if sir. we do this dude we're gonna knock this dude, sucker out we put fast, our hands dude. on it we're gonna build it until it's finished so what we're thinking about doing is putting it right here in this location straightening this out maybe putting it uh, building it as big as possible right here honestly yeah dude. definitely probably dude. do it like two cars deep that way we can store our cars because like the cars at parents house it's just overwhelming over there and especially 
especially with all the new projects coming in. Yeah, definitely, like man. That. We got cars everywhere over there. So we want to just get that off of their property, basically, yeah. and just build something super nice right here. Let us know what you guys think about that. And also, we brought something else up the mountain yeah, with us, dude. We brought something else all in boxes right here. This is all going to be a lift kit for that Jeep right there. We didn't forget about that sucker. We got some epic plans for that. We're going to completely redo that thing. It's going to be epic, dude. Yes, sir. And Rough Country is working with us on that Jeep. So you know it's going to be super sick, dude. dude. 100%. Oh, my dude, goodness. Dude. I can't wait for that. But that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. Next video is going to be Tesla. We're going to find some parts and start getting that thing cranked out. Yes, dude. sir, dude. But guys, that is pretty much going to be it for today's video. We got some super epic things planned for the channel, so you're not going to want to miss out on anything. Definitely make sure your post notifications are on. And if you want an inside scoop before YouTube, definitely give us a follow on Instagram at Goon Squad. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for all the love and support. Be sure to drop your comments and thoughts down below. We'll catch you guys next time. Peace.